So I'm just going to select this particular polygon at the front here because it's going to be for the longest finger. Note that the actual direction in which the actual arrow is pointing in, I want to make sure that it's pointing nicely down the center of the actual finger. So when I extrude it, it's going to extrude it straight. Making sure that you actually scale and move And it'd be a good idea to move to the selection coordinates so that we actually get the arrow or the um, uh, universal manipulator pointing at the correct direction of the polygon normals. So you can see here that I'm making a series of extrusions. An extra extrusion I'm going to create for the knuckle area. And then you'll notice that I'm going to be scaling it in a minute. It's a good idea to actually look at your perspective view because you can't judge just on one singular view. You need to be able to see what you're doing for many views. In this particular case, I'm going to scale this down slightly. And um, I recommend that you spend as much time as possible on this particular finger because we're going to be using it for all the other fingers. So we definitely don't want to rush this. So extruding out again, we're going to scale in again. Then screw, extrude out just to the beginning of the actual nail. And then one more extrusion to the end of the nail. At this particular point, it's time to actually start to form and shape the fingers a little bit more better and it's important that you spend a bit of time doing this also we want to make a nice creased area underneath the actual finger and the way that we do this is by selecting an edge and pulling it in closer so we're going to move this edge in closer and we're just going to kind of central it a bit better and ideally you want these edges to be in between the actual knuckle area so we need to move this backwards a little bit so we are shift click and select both of these and move these back just a little bit and we'll do the second same for the actual front part of the knuckle as well now we're going to create this nail by first selecting the polygon and extruding inwards We then move this down slightly and then we extrude up and then move it forward. This would be a good time to actually rotate this slightly and then just move it down slightly more. Now you notice that there's a polygon right on the front there and this is where we could actually create an extension to the nail. In this particular case I won't. But what I will do is I'll make sure I've selected the other polygons that are at the front here and just scale it in a little bit to create more of a natural shape of the end of the finger and indeed we need to have this part of the nail also thinner so it creates that natural shape we're just going to smooth it on level 2 we can see that it's actually creating the nail quite nicely we take this smoothing back off now From the top view I'm going to select all of the polygons, make sure that you're selecting all of them, even the ones we can't see underneath, and then we're going to hold the shift and the numeric plus key. This is the area on your keyboard which just deals with numbers. And we keep on doing this until we select all of these polygons. Going to perspective view, there may be some polygons that don't get selected, so make sure that they are selected all the way around. When you're happy that they are, we can copy and make a duplicate of this finger. No, we're not going to actually take the full last two polygons or the last polygon for that finger. So we're going to press Ctrl and C to copy, then Ctrl and V to paste. And you can see in the scene tree that I've actually got a duplicate finger. You need to duplicate this three times at this particular moment. You would have seen me do one as an example. So I'm going to select both of these in the scene tree, right click and then 
group them as I've just done and then I'm just going to select that finger within that group and move it out where I can actually rotate it and scale it and get it into position you note that I purposely left the gap there and this is why I didn't copy the whole finger and this is because we're going to be able to bridge it so looking at my perspective view I'm just making sure that I've got everything in the right place and by the looks of it I need to just rotate this finger around to naturally go around with this arc that we created earlier now you see that this is quite open at the actual finger at the moment so we need to bridge this so we're going to select both edges the top and the bottom and then we're going to go in the vertex modeling tab and click on bridge in order to bridge from the finger to the hand we need to make sure that we've got the group selected not just one individual finger which we can't do it so now we've got the group selected we can go to select the face from the finger and the face that it's going to and then click on that bridge tool again do this for all the other fingers scaling it rotating it and getting it in position and then bridging it together you may want to go over the whole hand just to make sure that all the vertices are in the right place and everything is looking okay you can see here that we've got a nice arc now natural from what we've done at the very beginning and now we're going to look on how to actually create this thumb area so to do this I'm going to select the edges just around here to create that natural crease for the thumb area underneath and you may want to turn off double sided which I've just done now we're going to just spend a little bit of time just to shape things when um, it concerning the actual thumb area because we need to get this right and we just rotate these around Now we all, you will see sometimes when you actually create um, a hand or somebody's created a hand in a tutorial that they just use the actual bottom part to actually extrude the thumb out of but when I do it I don't I actually create the thumb between the side and the bottom and this gives us a nice angle for the thumb so we can actually animate it and sculpt it so I'm selecting the um, polygon faces between the side and the bottom and then I will extrude inwards once. We we'll just pull that out. Now is the time to actually spend a bit of time to shape this bottom area because if we don't, all the extrusions coming from this is going to come out with the same shape, and we don't want that.